why can't i why can't i focus mm. why why <laughs> why can't i just focus in one thing why am i dispersed all around <laughs> does it happen that you want to i won't say you try to but you want to focus on something but then there is like what's going on <laughs> right serious crisis in this world because of social media and especially uh, different apps like uh, tiktok and you know instagram reels youtube shorts the attention span of every average human or maybe even animals is going down as kali yuga is progressing and it's getting worse day by day so uh, the thing is why are we not able to focus why what is the reason there has to be a reason right for everything <laughs> see the thing is we look for so many solutions we develop apps like productivity app now we make calendars we make schedules we do so many things which apparently makes us uh, focused for some period of time but then uh, again it's back to square one after some days why does it happen that all the superficial techniques that we try to uh, give uh, to ourselves to gift ourselves rather to gain better focus in life uh, it just fails eventually in the long run these techniques work but when there is a downfall there is like a tsunami that comes in your life wave after wave of suffering and uh, trouble and pain and uh, disappointments you will again lose the focus right so why does it happen well because there is something fundamental which we are missing and which we are not working towards right until the time we work towards that then whatever we do officially writing notes making excel sheets timing our progress trying to concentrate trying to stay away from uh, any distractions it is not going to work right it might work in the sh- in the short term but not in the long run definitely all right so that's exactly what we are going to discuss today and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe it below and if you have not watched this fire of inspirations playlist then you can watch it uh, quite some videos now and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down in the description section now focus what is focus focus means to focus <laughs> the thing is when we say that you should focus on one thing we tend to think that oh focusing on something means to just think of that not to think of anything else <laughs> well that is actually a definition of focus but the thing is there is a prerequisite for you to be able to focus on something if you do not have that then you can't focus on anything what is that number one prerequisite is you should have a purpose for why you are doing what you are doing if you don't have a purpose you will have no focus so when people say they lack focus they actually don't lack focus they actually lack purpose right so you don't lose focus you lose purpose actually or maybe you never had any purpose that is why especially in terms in matters of career people tell me oh sir uh, actually you know i have lost my focus i don't know what's going on so many things are going on how should i regain my focus how should i gain my focus back that's the question right but then i ask them a counter question well my dear sir my dear madam what was your purpose why did you do this why did you do that why did you do engineering why did you go for 
MBBS, medical science? Why did you go for journalism? Why did you go for sports? Why did you go for YouTube? Why did you go for astrology, right? So <clears throat> your focus will be as good as your purpose. If your purpose is not good or you don't have a purpose, then it's just a waste of time to discuss about your know, focus and all these things because purpose keeps you geared and anchored towards something. And that brings focus because when your purpose is very clear, then you don't like to deviate because distraction means alternative attraction. Should I repeat? Distraction means alternative attraction. So when you get distracted, what is happening is things which are not related to your purpose is coming and hindering. But if you don't have a purpose, you feel distractions are okay. You welcome them. You may not welcome them wholeheartedly, but you will definitely not say no to them. But when you have a purpose, you are very clear. Oh, will this help me in the long run? This distraction that is coming in my life, will it be good for me or for my purpose? May or may not be good for me, but what about my purpose, right? So therefore, if you want strong focus in life, regard in regards to any area of your life, either it's health, career, marriage, relationship, spirituality, all the time, I see, you should have a good purpose. Let's talk of spirituality here. Many times I also see people telling me, oh, actually, sir, you know, I lost my focus in my spiritual life. How should I get it back or what should I do? The thing is, you need to ask yourself, what was your purpose of starting this particular spiritual practice? Why did you start? Most of the people in Kali Yuga, as Kali Yuga is Dukhale Masharshvatam, as Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Kali Yuga is a place of misery. At the end of the day, most of the people are miserable in Kali Yuga. Even those who are good looking, they are miserable. Those who are rich, they are miserable. Those who are intelligent, they are also miserable. The degree of misery varies, but everybody has some area where some where they are getting some misery from. So the thing is, the degree and the quality and quantity of misery may vary. But as Lord Krishna says, material world means misery. Simple. Right? Why? Because everything is bound by matter, which is bound to die one day, which is bound to be extinct one day, right? Our, this body is also going to die one day. Right? Of course, Krishna says in the Gita, the soul doesn't die. Right? Nahanyate hanya mane sharire. Krishna says the soul cannot be killed. Soul is eternal. Sat chitananda. Right? So, <clears throat> if you start your spiritual life with this assumption that one day by doing spiritual practices, your material life will improve you are going to be the most frustrated person in this entire universe. That is why people leave doing, uh, they stop continuing their um, spiritual practices because they thought, oh, I will do this. I will have a better career. I'll have a better married life or I'll have a better health. But they forget to understand this basic principle that Spiritual advancement has nothing to do with your material life. Even if you are the worst beggar, the biggest or the richest person in this world, it has it it will have no impact on your spiritual life. If you um, if you if you have the necessary focus, right? Being a beggar will not impede or will not improve your spiritual life, and being a billionaire will also not. In, uh, will not stop you from making further spiritual progress, nor will it um, just help you and just make you spiritual, right? So therefore, you have to understand why should you do spiritual practices? Not because you'll have a better looking body, not because you'll have a better paycheck, not because you'll have more followers, because that is your constitutional duty, right? Jivera Swarup Hoy Krishna Nityadas. This is what is said in the scriptures. So this means the living entity, the living being is eternally a servant of Lord Krishna. So when you serve God, 
it's like watering the root of the tree right so you see this tree behind <laughs> wow what an example so <clears throat> Imagine uh, somebody comes and tries to uh, give water to all the leaves present there in this tree, right? How many? Thousands of leaves. But what will an intelligent person do? He will directly go and water the root because he knows when I water the root, this water will reach to every dot of this tree. Every corner, every bit of the tree will be nourished by the water. All right, so... Doing spiritual practices is like connecting to God at that level. And that is why you will always be rejoicing. All right. Same thing is with your career. Why did you do what? Why did you do this? Why did you do bachelor's in this particular domain? Why not that? Did you have any goal in life other than maybe earning money, <laughs> which is not bad? But if earning money is the primary motive of your career, then uh, unless there are requirements of survival, you will be very miserable in the long run. Which means <laughs> if a person is like uh, having no money at all, has no money for you know food, clothing, shelter, that person may say, oh, my only motive in life to do a job is to earn money because I want to feed my stomach and you know, myself, my family, uh, my parents have some problem, my brother is there, brother sister is studying or i have to get them married or whatever some some reason you give but the thing is beyond that when you have reached to certain extent where your basic needs are already met very easily by money if even after that you think that oh the only reason i should be uh involved in this career is because of money then you seriously have no goal in life because money is a byproduct which comes as a result of your excellence all right Money is a byproduct of excellence and service. So if you have excellence and you offer service to others, you will become rich automatically. You may not be rich in dollars, but rich in relationships, rich in love, rich in you know blessings, right? And also rich in money, right? <laughs> Why not? Because people will open up their pockets when they reach you. Because they feel, yes, this person can help me. Why not I give them a part of my share, which I have in my bank account, right? <laughs> so, therefore, whenever you lose focus, ask yourself this question. Why did you start this in the first place? What was your intention? What was your motive? What was your aim, your goal? But there's a catch here. Even if you have a good goal, you have a good focus, you have a clear master plan even then you will get distracted you know why because getting being distracted is the nature of the mind chanchalam himana krishna pramathi balabadridam tasyaham nigraham manye vayore vasudushkaram this is what arjuna is telling to lord krishna chanchalam himana krishna pramathi balabadridam chanchalam himana krishna means the mind is very restless chanchala Balavadriham, very powerful. It's very, very powerful. Tasyaham, he says, I can, Vayoreva uh, Sudushkam, it's more difficult to control than the wind. Can you believe it? Very, very, very difficult. I can control the winds. Arjuna is telling this. Look, there's a wind going on here in the background. Is there anybody? The president of any country, United States, Russia, India, Pakistan, China, all the presidents, chancellors, prime ministers, leaders coming together, can they stop wind? They cannot. In fact, in USA, long time back or maybe some time back, when there was a big hurricane, like a tornado, the government just said, just evacuate, just evade, just run away from that place, right? Because Nobody can challenge nature, but Arjuna is equipped with so many divine weapons, the Vyastras, by which he can do supernatural things which a normal person cannot do. Right? When Bhishma Pitama was lying down, then Arjuna, by one arrow to the ground, he had he brought out 
the water of Mother Ganges, Ganga Devi. But now the same Arjuna who had acquired the great Pachupatastra from Lord Shiva, who had got all the divine weapons, all the Divyastras from Indra Devta and so many arrows and uh, so many powerful weapons from you know, his Guru Dronacharya. But now he is telling that I cannot capture the mind. I can capture the wind. I can, uh, as they say, Havao ka rukh mor dena. <laughs> but then he's telling, I cannot control the mind. So therefore, even if you have a good purpose, good focus, the so first is purpose, then comes focus. But then even then you'll be distracted. Okay. So what should you do? Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, how should you control the mind? Abhyas and Tyaga. These are two things that he says, right? By practice and detachment. So practice controlling the mind and be detached and also do spiritual practices because when you do spiritual practices every day, diligently, without fail, or at least to whatever extent you can, by that you will automatically gain mind control and you will automatically uh, gain power to control uh, your senses and by that you will have good focus actually. All right? so therefore, do not miss out on uh, mind control. Uh, I mean, do not miss out on spiritual practices when you are trying to achieve mind control because mind control without spiritual practices is just an illusion. There is no mind control. Now you may say, oh, I know this big person, he is a big businessman or she is you know, very famous. They don't do spiritual practices. Uh, but how do they have so much mind control? Well, that also depends on your karma. To what extent you will be uh, you will be having good things in life or to what extent you will have bad things in life. But whoever that person is, the most beautiful, the most intelligent, the most rich, we have seen time and again in history. When difficult situations come, they succumb and they lose their focus and their life goes to ruins. All right? So temporarily you may see somebody who is rich or very famous is doing very good in life without doing any spiritual practices. But what is the eventual end? The dead end is they will die one day. Now you may say, oh, but if I do spiritual practices, will I not die? Well, of course you will die. I will die. Everybody will die one day. But when I say that a person who is spiritual will not die, is it means that the body will die, but the soul will live. So the amount of spiritual practices that you do will stay with you, which stays with the soul and it goes to the next life and then you start from there, right? It's like you, you started from 0 to, you wanted to go from 0 to 100, but you reached only 70. So next life you will start from 70. All the samskaras will be there. This is what the scriptures say, okay? And if you reach 100%, then you will reach perfection. You will go back to uh, the spiritual world. Never to return back into this material world, as Lord Krishna says, Yadagatvanivartante Taddhama Paramam Mama. Yes, this is what he says. One who reaches my abode never returns back to this material world. All right. So therefore, have a purpose. Ask yourself, why did you start this? Then you will have focus. And even then, if your mind is wavering, which it will sometimes, or most of the times, rather. Then you have to anchor it with spiritual practices by following, you know, practice and detachment. So you have to try to control the mind artificially in the beginning. And when you do spiritual practices, you will, your consciousness will be elevated by which you will gain supreme control of the mind. All right. So that is how you will never lose focus in life. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. Some other videos on similar topics, I'll put them here. You can watch them. And God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. And if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it down below. And if you want a consultation, my website is also down below. Thank you.